uh, B13, Dr. Pan Xiaowei, with the title of To Make Studying Pharmacotherapy Less Intimidating Towards Differentiated and Personalized Learning in Pharmacy Education. Um, I would like to just leave this session to you, Dr. Pan. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. I'd, I'd just like to share my slides. So just testing, are you able to see my slides? Yes, we can see your slide, that's fine. All right, all right. Okay, um, so can I start? Uh, yes, uh, but before that, uh, I would just like to remind you because uh, in order for me to um, to remind you know about your timing, to control right. your timing, so if I, can you hear this? Yes, can you hear yes, that? I can, I can, Okay, yeah. so if I put it once, it will be 10 more minutes right. and if the ring is twice, so that means that you have uh, another five more minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Pan. Yeah. All right. So just, just to make sure that you are not seeing my presenter's viewer, you are only seeing the slides. Uh, yes, we only see right. the slides. Okay. So <laughs> let me just, <laughs> so let me start. All right. So thank you, Chairperson. Good morning, everyone. And I'm Dr. Pan from the Department of Pharmaceutical Life Sciences, Faculty of Pharmacy. And I'm, I'm here to present our project on how to make studying pharmacotherapy less intimidating among pharmacy undergraduates by using differentiated and personalized learning. Okay, so let me introduce my team. We have Juan Shirin and Juan Nora Shikin. So both of them are pharmacists. So they are from the Department of Clinical Pharmacy and Pharmacy Practice, whereby I'm actually from the Department of Pharmaceutical Life Sciences. So for your information, our faculty is the youngest faculty in UM, and we were previously part of Faculty of Medicine. So what is pharmacotherapy? So pharmacotherapy is basically the treatment by using uh, pharmaceutical drugs. So in pharmacotherapy courses, pharmacy students are supposed to learn the first component, which is the pharmacology, whereby they learn about the size of the drugs, which include their mechanism of action, indication, roads of administration, elimination, excretion, um, indication, and a lot of things, uh, including contraindications. So then the second part, after learning about the pharmacology theoretical knowledge, they will then learn about the clinical management and pharmacy practice, because each individual patient will need um, different types of drug regime and different types of drug treatment, okay? So uh, in UM pharmacy program, we have about 20% of pharmacotherapy related modules. So starting from year one itself. So year one, we have pharmacotherapy for EENT and hematological disorders. And then moving on to year two, they have pharmacotherapy for infectious diseases, whereby we divide it into two blocks. So they learn about all the drugs on antibiotics, antiviral agents, antifungal, antiparasitic drugs, and so on. Then moving on to year three, so there will be more on the uh, neurological disorders, psychiatric disorder, cancer pain. And year four, they will, will, they will be going for attachment, but there's only one pharmacotherapy courses left, which is pharmacotherapy for special population, whereby I as the coordinator, and I believe it is the perfect module to be used as a case study in this particular project. So um, here are the problem statements. So often we hear pharmacy students complain about pharmacotherapy courses. They are generally overwhelmed by the large number of drugs to, to be learned during the entire pharmacy undergraduate training. So pharmacy students always find studying pharmacotherapy intimidating and terrifying. So they have raised their concerns in C test. So we feel that there is a need to strengthen pharmacotherapy courses in pharmacy undergraduate education, not just UM, but probably that it can be extended to the Malaysian pharmacy program, as many students face difficulties in implementing the theoretical knowledge into practice later on during their career. So all in all, we feel that there's a lack of differentiated and personalized teaching and facilitation to meet students' diverse learning styles 
in terms of pharmacy education in UM. So uh, the, the primary research question is that how are we going to tackle these sort of problems? So first by asking how to make pharmacotherapy oriented subject less intimidating. So um, people, uh, we can't help, but we always uh, are often intimidating without realizing it. But sometimes it is just us. So perhaps the intimidating nature of certain causes merely is just a consequence of unconscious bias and stereotype. So this we are going to address that. And, and uh, to answer the research questions, we take on the approach of personalization. So even Starbucks, so when they serve the customer, they also do the personal, personal, personalizing uh, marketing. So they, 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 they give you the name. I mean, like they, they spelled it wrongly. So it has to be, it used, it, it's supposed to be Adam, but then they say Adam. But regardless of that, so there's a personal touch on this. So we take on the approach of personalization, which is also the theme of this year lighter grant. So personalization means the practices that tailor the pace and focus of instruction to address the needs and goals of each individual students. So bear in mind that the learning needs of each students may be different and the individual students will have different pace and they will have their own academic progress. So students will lose confidence when they compare grades among them and this could lead to depression for certain slower paced students. So apparently students come with different ways of learning while we, we teachers will have a specific way of delivering our lecture and we always think that it is the students who adapt to the teaching style rather than the teacher adapts to the learning style whereby we are going to correct that and we move to move away from that because this tends to create a teacher centered learning instead of student centered learning whereby we favor the, the later one. So we believe that by incorporating learning styles to teaching, teaching and learning will become interactive, collaborative and engaging. So uh, the traditional form of teaching where teachers give information and the students at the end receive will no longer exist since the role of teacher now has become more on facilitation and as a guide that leads students to what concept needs to be learned. And it is the students who will work hard to attain the desired goal of the subject matter. So for this entire project, we will um, employ the Howard Garner multiple intelligence theory that says the extent to which students possess different kinds of minds and therefore learn, remember, perform and understand in different ways. So I will not go into detail the multiple intelligence where, which I will be elaborating more um, next. So let me take a module which is integrated pharmacotherapy as an example of our first move to move to make a shift towards personalizing teaching and learning. So this is actually the old module it's called integrated pharmacotherapy with the old code that capture pharmacotherapy of um, all sorts of um, uh, diseases from a particular special populations. So they capture the pharmacotherapy of Alzheimer's disease, for example. Parkinson's disease, dementia, and a lot more. And we find that the course design itself is very undifferentiated and broad, and it is very disease focused, whereby it puts the pharmacotherapy first and then the people later on. Next, we design. Uh, we feel that a new personalized course content is more favorable. Therefore, we customize the course into a different population. Then we have male and female, geriatric, older population, pregnant women, neonates, children, and so on. With this, then the, the course itself will be more differentiated and focused and we will put people first and then the pharmacotherapy. In this way, it is less terrifying, I guess. So, so this is the course that I'm coordinating uh, pharmacotherapy for special population. So this is the approach that we are going to use. No, we, we have done this to our the pilot test of this case study. So we feel that a differentiated instruction should complement and should supply to the personalized learning environment. So we, we lecturers uh, have discussed and we come up with the ABC approach. So A is assess as you go. 
Um, so we uh, personalized learning is that uh, the students must go according to their space. So we do not wait until the final assessment. So we assess as you go up. So we have small tests, we have quizzes along the way, and we fully utilize full force on spectrum. Okay. So bite science teaching, which where, whereby the B is, is that uh, we do not give the students the apple, but we give them a bite size. Uh, okay. We provide information in bite size chunk. We, we focus just on one or two key objectives, all right? So we always go back to the outcome-based learning. So do not teach more than that and focus on maybe one to three key objectives and learning outcome. And stay connected is that we will ensure that the students' problems can be attended to as soon as possible and they, are, they full, feel free to get back to the lecturers. So all in all, we have a clear aim now is to pilot test a differentiated and personalized approach to deliver the content of this OIA 4010 module and with the specific objectives first is to assess the Howard Gardner multiple intelligence of the, the final year B farm students. Okay, and then to assess and monitor the new module with the implementation of differentiated teaching methods, namely the A, the B, C approach. And then the third to evaluate and compare the perception and effectiveness of this approach um, among the students and also among the teachers. The teachers means the coordinator, me, myself, and also the lecturers who are co-teaching this module. So let's do it. So I'm just going to flash you these slides on the timeline and the flowchart of our project. And um, these are some of the activities that they do. So this is the 20% of assignment whereby they use uh, screencast automatic to create a video, which is about eight to eight minutes long video. And we group them according to their different multiple intelligences. Okay, um, so just for your information, this screencast automatic uh, application is a free software. And um, we, we think that this assignment will provide an in-depth learning where the students of different intelligences can get together and they will get a totally engaged since each member needs to play a part for their presentation to be more successful. In a way, their critical thinking skills will, will, will be developed for this. So for this particular group, group 13, their topics is actually BHP and um, they comprise of um, group member of um, visual intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, logical intelligence and also intrapersonal intelligence. So, oops, 12, 12 minutes pass, huh? all right, okay. Then we use a Padlet, which is an interactive e-learning tool. So we ask the students to paste their work on the, on the wall so that the peers can actually evaluate and admire each other's work. And then also remember the A, assess as you go. So we use Mentimeter to collect feedback from the students. So once a while, and with Spectrum, we post case studies, tutorials, a, and even quizzes to, to Spectrum so that the students can uh, learn at their own pace at home. And also uh, we use Quizlet and also certain types of gamification uh, to create a collaborative learning environment. So these are the students working together to solve um, a certain tutorial, so certain puzzles. So here's the findings. Okay, so uh, probably I will just go a bit slower. So this is the overall class in multiple intelligence, whereby we found that the most dominant being intrapersonal with, uh, with a total mapping or total score of 291. And so imagine uh, one student, they have multiple intelligences. So some of them that score negative, doesn't, doesn't mean that they are unintelligent, but just they do not have possessed that kind of intelligence. So intrapersonal is the most dominant one among all the students in, in, in this particular final year. And second being logical and third being a spatial visual. So not worthily, um, linguistic and language uh, is with ne negative 96 and musical is negative 18. So, so we, if we were to zoom in to individualization, so um, a total of 59 students, 48 of them will have one dominant highest multiple intelligence. 
and out of the 48, so 18 of them are of intrapersonal intelligence, means that their learning style and their strengths is on um, self-reflections. They know that they are aware of their emotion, uh, they are aware of their, 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 their emotion and also their, they always do a lot of self-reflection. And then seven of them have, multi, have two combinations of highest multi-intelligence and four of them has three different combinations of highest multiple intelligence. Okay, so this is the demographic of what we call the customer avatar of, this, of the entire class. So for the screencast automatic um, video assignment, so all of them scored A to B with 24 scoring A, uh, 9 scoring A minus, and 22 scoring B plus, and 4 B. So bear in mind that this is a, a project-based kind of project, a project-based kind of assignment whereby with the grouping of four of them, but they are scored individually, both peer reviewed and lecturer reviewed. So, yeah, so 18 of the intrapersonal intelligence actually score an A here. Okay, intrapersonal multiple intelligence. Okay, so the overall grade, so this graph shows you the overall grade obtained after the class has attended the final exam. So, um, this module is of 60% of written final exam, which is individual, 60% written, and 40% of continuous assessment. Uh, the 40% comprise of the 20% of the video assignment, just um, which I have shown you a moment ago, and 20% of assess as you go kind of small test. Okay, so we observed um, a different trend here as compared to the previous slide with students getting B minus and C plus here in overall grade, which is understandable, okay, given that this is an individual final exam uh, with 60% for write on the paper and pen kind of written exam. But basically, uh, all the students have improved judging from the small test and the final 60% component, whereby the data is not shown here. But I would like to highlight here that there's one particular A student and the A student falls under the visual uh, domain of multiple intelligence. So this makes us um, sort of like uh, analyze the learning analytics. The learning analytics simply means that the uh, analysis of student behavior and success based on the logs in the spectrum. So if you will go to the, the our own home, our own uh, house in-house Moodle spectrum, you can see under the report under the course, under reports, and you can go to the logs. So um, there are a lot of information there. It's almost like a big data, but I'm going to show you these two variables, which is the overall grade and also the total number of logs in spectrum. The total number of logs simply means that uh, the number of time the students log into the spectrum and do something. For example, they view the assignment, they view the course, they post forum, they post something in the forum. Uh, they view the forum, they view the glossary, they view the questionnaire, they attempted the quiz, anything. So uh, we found out that uh, there is a positive, positive correlation, positive but weak, yet significant correlation between the final grades and also total number of logs in spectrum. So the one that I Fox sits here actually is one particular student who has a total number of logs achieved 359 times, which is the maximum number of logs in spectrum. And this particular student is the one, the high achiever is the she, it's a she, she, she actually is the only one that scored A with four pointer here. So it does say something here, you see, it does mean that the more you use spectrum, the higher grade you will get. Okay, which but uh, but this is just a hypothesis whereby we need more in-depth analysis. Lah. So, but for this particular case, we do see that kind of um, trend. Okay, so with minimum of 28 logs in the spectrum, this is uh, a bit kind of unacceptable. And the grade is actually not so high. Lah. Okay, so we did a post-study survey and 100% of the participants agree to the statement that uh, realizing my own MI and the group members MI can help improve other weaker areas. So um, one interesting point is that um, 
the particular student is also a leader in the group and they are of the intrapersonal intelligence. And the particular student says that I am intrapersonal intelligence and I think it helps me to, bet, to be a better group leader since any leaders must understand their feelings in order to make better decisions. So the, their feelings towards this MI actually go beyond achieving good grades, but in terms of self-discovery and to be a better, better self of themselves, actually. So I have a few minutes more. So um, these studies come with limitation. As much as we would like to celebrate the diversity of learners and provide the students with opportunities to, to utilize the various types of intelligence, it is not easy to differentiate teaching for certain pharmacy courses. So now we only tackle about 20% of pharmacotherapy courses, but how about pharmaceutical technology courses whereby there needs a lot of application and hands-on experience. So that, that might be a limitation and a problem arises arising from there. So for conclusion, we think that integration of learning styles and multiple intelligent theory do enhance the strengths of learners that will help them develop their self-efficacy. Okay, to develop their self-efficacy because each of them come with different personal goal and not all of them wants to score high. Okay, and not all of them come with the mindset that I want to score high, but at least develop their self-efficacy. And there's a need for best practice and full support from the faculty and also from institution to involve a whole new paradigm which can address and accommodate multi-modality and multi-style of teaching. Uh, perhaps to, to share my thoughts on uh, the, the some certain research questions that derive from this um, study is that we, we have to think about how to encourage students to use their preferred intelligence in learning and how to design instructional activities that should appeal to different forms of intelligence. And thirdly, maybe is to how the lecturers, the educators formulate assessment of learning that measures multiple forms of intelligence. So that is the questions that I, I, um, I, I pose after carrying out this study. All right, um, so that's the end of my presentation. I would like to thank ADEC for funding this project. I would like to thank the entire staff of Faculty of Pharmacy and of course the class of 2016 of Pharmacy B Farm program. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pine. Uh, Thank that's you. a very nice presentation. Um, and uh, I really like uh, the, uh, when you, you know, the fact that you did uh, compare uh, the spectrum login numbers mm. with the grade level yeah. of the students. Um, yes, like you said, it's still early um, to determine that, that yeah. you know, there's a significant relationship. I mean, there is a significant relationship, but a very weak relationship, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but, um, it's really interesting when you said that this particular student um, mm. logged in 358 59. times. <laughs> yes. 359 times. Mm. How, how many times did she log in per week? <laughs> so which yeah. means that she, yeah. Uh, look, so that is a very interesting question. So learning and analytics, actually we can zoom into like um, how many, uh, the weekly basis, how many, how many, like 359 times, uh, how, what is the frequency weekly and is it is it uh, evenly distributed throughout the, the the one semester or is is last minutes towards the exam? So we Correct. do not know that. So we we have to find out. The, I, that's why I said learning analytics is a very much interesting area to study the student behavior because uh, we have a very big data that we can we can analyze and study about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And why do you choose uh, multiple intelligence? Um, yeah. you know, for your study. All right, the multiple intelligence, I first encountered it when I was actually teaching in UCSI because my, my first teaching job is actually not in UN but in UCSI. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we had and just for a bit of sharing, so we had one week extensive teacher, teacher training and the first topic that they teach us is to find out the multiple intelligence, not by other means, but by Howard Gardner's methods. Mm -hmm to study the demographic of your class. So you need to know your customers' data. Mm -hmm. You need to know each and every one of them. That's why it is, 
actually this cohort I first taught them during year two mm -hmm. when I was teaching in pharmacotherapy for infectious disease. It, and in fact, at that time, I already give them these uh, multiple intelligences. And when I give them again in year four, this data is not shown, but the multiple intelligence actually uh, do, do match. I would say like 80 to 90 percent of them match two years ago when they were actually in year two for the mm -hmm. same cohort. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's very interesting actually. Yes. I think I yes. now I think now I'm inspired and I think I might use multiple intelligence yeah. for my class. That's yeah. Thank you yeah, so that, much for that. that, that there's a template for it uh, which is All 102 right. questions. Oh, okay. oh, there's 102 questions. Yeah, there's 102 questions. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So normally when do you ask the students to do this? At the uh, at the beginning of the class? Yeah, at the beginning of the class. The first day. The first day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So because I think that this module is perfect uh, timing for this for us for me to do this because I am the coordinator. So mm -hmm. I will be doing the introduction to the course whereby I will be going to the class first. So I think this is the perfect um, course for me to conduct this project. Right. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. very good. That's very good. Perhaps if you have more questions, we can actually go yeah. to you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. About sure. multiple intelligence. Yeah. Yes. We do have some multiple intelligence as well uh, yesterday yes, presentations. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I, so the kids, I mm. yeah. yeah. So anyway, thank you, Dr. Vine. Thank you so thank much you. for your presentation. I'm thank really you, glad Dr. that you are here in uh, LightTech 2020.